Hey guys, Dan here from Dan's Miller Code. Uh, today's guest is amazing, Sean Finnegan. What's up, dude? Hey, how are you, man? Dude, look, I'm Good gonna see quick, you, quick intro here, okay? Yep. Uh, crazy, super entrepreneur. Um, he's done a lot of different things. You can Google him, and we'll give you a link where you can follow him. But his big one right now, where we've hung out a lot, is is uh, Tax Hive, and um, his he's business partners with Kevin O'Leary, the Shark, which is That's pretty right. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. yeah. Yep. Uh, his place is awesome. We'll post some footage over at his place. Uh, but incredible dude. And we're both like maniac entrepreneurs. Yes, for sure. Cool, man. So thanks, Dan. All right, man. Give us the uh, journey of like from when you were a small child to uh, how you got to where you are today, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I grew up in a uh, pretty much lower class kind of uh, family. My dad was a bookstore manager for 40 years. Stayed, oh, Utah? Stayed, yeah, Utah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so he stayed as a bookstore manager for 40 years. So, and we had five kids in the family. So it was like scrappy, scrappy. So my dad literally knew how much he was going to make down to his, down to the penny every wow. single week for 40 years. Wow. Never risked anything. He was just like that great human being that just even every week. And so my mom, she was a scrappy, she's an immigrant from Scotland, still has a thick accent. And she was like the original side hustle lady. Really? So she had a side hustle for everything. And one of them was preschool. So I just, I saw my mom, like our marketing was like me and my brothers walking down the street and doing flyers and trying to get business for the preschool. And I just saw the difference of those two examples between, you know, steady, you know, very low risk to my mom, just scrappy. And I just said, I want to be my mom. So I always grew up selling. I mean, I sold everything. I was the side hustle guy growing up. She goes like best friends. Oh yeah, best friends for sure. She's like so like she's, this. Sean. Yeah, she is. She is like the best salesperson on the planet. I think. That's awesome. Yeah. So what was the what was the uh, so marketing the preschool? Yeah. Uh, how about where did it go from there? So that so I went to college. I started my first business in college was a cabinet company. Oh wow. So I wore a lot of hats. I'd go out there, sell the contractor, and then I put a different hat on and actually help build the stuff, and then I'd carry the stuff in, and so all while I was going to school. Wow. So I started, that was like kind of my first taste of running a business and going through some pain. Wow. wow. So after school, I did corporate America. And then ultimately I said, I'm going to start my own business. Whoa. My own significant business was in 2009. Wow. What kind of business? So I just said, I'm going to do a live event business. I was going to make a big impact. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll tell you the story. I launched, so I, I meet with these guys that are going to be my business partners. Mm -hmm. And we, there used to be, be a place called Hoagie Yogi. So we'd sit. Oh, yeah, I remember that place. Hoagie Yogi, we'd go sit down. We'd That's just good. stare at each other and we'd have these conversations because we had no office. It was like our office was Hoagie Yogi. So we'd order a Hoagie and we'd sit there for hours and plan our, our way we're going to make an impact on the world. And essentially, we wanted to, you know, go get a hold of big celebrity people, sell tickets, have them get on stage and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had a whole plan. And then I started recruiting. So I recruited like the best, you know, marketers, the best salespeople I knew, the best operators. Mm -hmm. And then I went and raised 1.2 million from investors. Wow, nice. So that was an, an, an experience because I had to go in there pre-revenue. I hadn't created a dime, but I had a team, I had my plan, I had spreadsheets showing that I was gonna become a millionaire on the spreadsheet. <laughs> it was like, this is like spreadsheet millionaire stuff. So I went and presented uh, to these people and raised 1.2 million bucks. Work, and I, it, like if you were to get in a time machine and go back and talk to that Sean and and get out and say, hey, how you feeling at this point? I felt like I was on top of the world because I had an incredible team of people. I would read everything about entrepreneurs. I love learning about people. I had a plan and I had uh, 1.2. Yeah. So I was like ready to make an impact, boom. And my business partner, his famous quote is, in business, poo poo happens. <laughs> and for me, poo poo happened. Oh, At man. everything you can imagine. This is 2009. You and I have been through two Yeah, yeah. It was a horrendous time to start a business. It was horrible. Oh. So I go launch this business. I have problems. My first event is with David Bach, the automatic millionaire guy, yeah. who's an author. And I do direct mail to get people in the room. And my direct mail hits a week after my event to give oh, you an idea. Shit. So I had a horrible show. I like. And anything you could think of in operations, I had problems. In sales, I had problems. In marketing, I had problems. And within 12 months, I had lost the 1.2, gone. Didn't take oh. a dime myself from it. Like no salary, nothing. It's easy to burn, huh? Uh huh. So you're burning through trying to figure out this model, making mistake after mistake after mistake. Jeez. So 12 months later, that that money's gone. 
and I've tapped everything. Personal lines, credit lines. No, your investors pissed at you. Investors are like, what's going on? Because they're seeing the revenue slip. And certain investors were like harder to work with. So they're like, well, wanted daily reporting versus other ones were cool. And it's like, hey, just keep scrapping, figuring it out. So you had all the pressures of the investors. Yeah. And then uh, for me, that business hit rock bottom on a Thursday night. And the reason is, is because I had 2,500 bucks in the bank. Oh, shiz. And the next day, payroll was due. And the payroll was 3,500. So I was a thousand bucks short and I didn't have a thousand bucks to my name. I had tapped everything. It was, it was one of the worst nights literally of my life. Oh, that's, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I remember just like that pit in my stomach and I'm like lying down on my bed and I'm looking at the ceiling and I'm like all night. Cause the next day what that meant is I had to go talk to people that had faith and confidence in me and say, Hey, I can't pay you, which is just. It's, to me, it's like a that's rock a, bottom. That's a tough it's one, a dude. It's a miserable, miserable thing. And, and I, so I always tell people, especially entrepreneurs, a lot of times we want to solve problems. Great entrepreneurs solve problems. But there is a difference between problems and pain, right? My problem is I had a failing business, but the pain was an actual physical, horrible pain. I mean, it was like a doubled over fetal position pain for me. Mm. Like, it ran deep. I mean, my family, everything... You, Everything's on the line, mm. and and it's and it's really miserable. So I think for people like, yeah, find out what problems your customers have, but also just find out how that those problems affect their life, and see if you can help them. Just listen to them more, and find out how those problems actually affect, and you'll hit a better core of people. So what, what happened, dude? When so the next so day, man. Here's this is what crazy. it is. You're having anxiety. Okay, here's what it is, tripping. dude. Yeah. So the next day, I I told the payroll company don't run payroll because it's an automatic payroll. I'm hoping. Uh, that there's some deposit, you know, maybe some Crazy. revenue comes in. Well, the next day there's no revenue that's coming in. There's nothing. So me and I had one business partner at the time. So me and my partner went to lunch and just to try to discuss how we can do this before we have to give the bad news to people that pretty much this thing's done. So we're sitting at lunch and we're like, what else do we have? And there, there's nothing we could tap. We're done. And uh, I get a phone call from my controller my controller calls up and says, "Hey Sean, I was digging in the safe and I found three thousand bucks in petty cash. <laughs> what would you like me to do with it?" Oh shit! And I'm like, "Why don't you hang on to that three thousand? And I screeched my tires and I drove back to the office. I picked up the three grand. I rushed to the bank. And the advantage of three grand at the bank is it it actually clears immediately. Yeah. So then I went into the bank, gave them the three grand, and I cut physical checks for the people." Nice. I wrote their names on them. I went back to the office. I mean, my partner went around and I presented physical checks for the people. Nice. And we made, I made it by a thousand bucks. That's close. To but, uh, so to me, that is like, so it was like the pain ran so deep, it, it created change in me. Like, that's why I wanted to change. And I, I knew I had to do things different because I had failed miserably in the past. And I was like, I'm not going to go back to this where I'm spending all night looking at my ceiling, having to go stop payroll and, and do this again. So Monday morning, I just said, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna get some salespeople in here that can sell. And it was the funniest calls. I call up some of my friends I knew. I was like, hey, can you come in and sell? And they're like, yeah, when do you want me to start? And I was like, can you come to now? Can you come right now? Like, can you come over and sell and, and start in five minutes? And like, I got a few guys of my friends to come and do that and they started <laughs> selling. Awesome. And I still remember revenue. We had a four thousand dollars sale that came in on a Wednesday. It was like the heavens opened and like four grand was presented because that meant I made, pay, made payroll again that week. So it kind of got me out of the woods again. Ugh. And then the second thing I did is I said I'm gonna get out of my my lane because I was like blinders on in the grind of running a business and I didn't have any relationships outside of that business. Mm -hmm. So I said I'm gonna actually network. I know that the best people, the good to great. They get the right people on the bus. I have relationships. If you look at every entrepreneur in history, they actually have a cast of people around them. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at any old pictures of Steve Jobs, who's Waz, Waz is right next to him. Mm -hmm. He's the guy actually putting it all together. Mm -hmm. Those relationships are so critical. And a lot of times, I mean, like Steve Jobs reached out to Bill Gates, right? Yeah. To bail him out. Yeah. Right? And it's like those relationships are so critical. So I was like, I've got to go actually build relationships. And the relationships 
that I brought on and started building, you know, joint ventures with is what changed my whole business. And I went on a run. We were able to pay off those investors plus interest. Nice. But it was only because of relationships. So I'm a big advocate for building, you know, rapport with people. And either you get a fresh new perspective or there could be a joint venture that you can do together. You've been, that's how we've been meeting as mm -hmm. uh, we did an event for our hedge fund at your place. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the Dirty Dough Cookie guys yeah, yeah, got yeah. everybody together. Yeah. And it's, it's a pretty good diverse crowd. I mean, some yeah. of my friends from 25 years ago. Right. Like, more newer ones too, but all the guys are making it happen. So yeah, good work, dude. Thank you, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. So what? So what happened to that company? And then how'd you get into like this new Kevin O'Leary? Come on. Yeah. So so <laughs> so you know, COVID is not great for live events, of course. And you know, things shifted, and we're like, okay, what do we do now? Um, for us, it was like, hey, we wanted to solve a problem, and we feel like business, like the small business people, they're just way underserved in the tax world literally the big firms won't even talk to them yeah so where do they go they're like scrap try to do taxes themselves or they go and do something off the shelf and it's no surprise to you and I that those business owners are paying way too much in taxes mm -hmm. so I had a relate we had a relationship with Kevin and so we said hey why don't we get Kevin who's a great brand and let's build a business around this taxes for small business owners smart so um, I, I hit Kevin up I said Kevin where are you going to be? We have we want to present a business to you. And he's like, great. He didn't know what it was. We didn't tee it up. So him and his right-hand person, Nancy, were in uh, Arizona. So I set up a time. And if you watch Shark Tank, you know, what does he say about numbers? you got to know the numbers. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the numbers, you're dead to me, right? That's mm -hmm. So I looked at every number there could possibly be. I looked at bar charts, line graphs, everything else. Me and my partners were ready to present this amazing way we're going to solve problems and the whole thing at this dinner. So Kevin the shark is sitting on one end <laughs> with Nancy, and he's doing his you know shark look. He has a nice watch on. Nice the watch, his red band with his <laughs> his watch, and he's staring. And there's a lot of pressure. I mean, it's like it wasn't a Shark Tank, but you feel a lot of pressure because your business is riding on this relationship with a shark. I mean, if you get a shark or you get a, a big high-end brand that you can do business with and market their brand and sell your product, you, you could build an incredible business. So lots of writing on this. Mm -hmm. So I still remember standing up and we start presenting, get into the pitch, and we're ready just to throw it all up there, exactly how the business is going to work and we're going to be doing bookkeeping, we're going to do tax filing, we're going to do tax plans for people so they know how they can save money. And like maybe three minutes in, he stops. He stops us. He's like, like the, like Simon Cow moment. Like, um, oh, like he's oh. just like stops. You tripping? He does this. <laughs> he's like, and so I remember like your heart, my heart sunk because I was like, well, it took me it took three minutes to mess this up. I remember looking at everyone around the table and they're like, man, we all you mess this up, and I was like, I mess this up, and and three minutes in, he's like, I'm in. Whoa, let's do it whatever it's going to take and then it was a long process even after that i mean he's he's on abc he's on sony he's in a guild which is a union oh it's a hollywood union right so you imagine like talking to all those guys mm. getting the deal done was a, many more months later hmm. and so then we struck up the the relationship with him this is how long ago so this is three and a half years ago okay yeah so now it's it's rocking right it's going yeah i'd say it's uh in the solid category Good. you know you just go through a lot of like chewing glass, getting that off the ground, figuring out your marketing is a challenge, figuring out, you know, the fulfillment's a challenge, and 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 now it's really I and mean, less anxiety. Our, oh yeah, less anxiety <laughs> for sure. Our fulfillment like is incredible at this point. It's never been better. So I, I I'm more confident than I've ever been in the product. Here's some interesting. Like right now, we're kind of in this uh, weird, shaky, recessionary tone mm -hmm. uh, winter. Yeah, and a lot of entrepreneurs out there that did really good with a lot of their, you know, during COVID even, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, are pretty scared right now. Yeah. Because things are, the environment's changing and a lot of the younger entrepreneurs haven't been through cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe, well, how would you recommend to the younger entrepreneur or even the more seasoned one that hasn't dealt with it, mm -hmm. uh, how to deal with like the anxiety and fear when things get choppy Yeah. Uh, with their business or the economy and all these things. Right. I love learning. So I think the best thing to do is educate yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll say this about your channel. You're my favorite follow. 
I, Thank you. I, you know I watch yeah. every single video you post. <laughs> Try to keep it fun. Yeah. Because you, you're a, you're, I feel like you're a visionary, especially with the economy the way it is, and I get really good insights. So I'd say look outside of yourself and start learning from some experts. I think it's the best way to learn in history. Mm -hmm. Go watch what you do. And like any time oh. the economy's turning, I turn on your channel and I see what your commentary is about what's going on right now between what you're talking about in crypto, the market, everything else. I love, I'm just a student of, a student of leadership and I love learning like that. I'm kind of the same way because, I mean, all those same emotions I experience, right? Mm -hmm. And most of our friends experience that, that are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people will come to guys like you and me to like, hey, well, how should I feel about mm -hmm. this? How should... So I don't always know the answers. So mm -hmm. I usually go and hang out with a lot of the you know older mentors. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you've been through this five or six cycles. Mm -hmm. I've been through it two or three cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, Should there be a different perspective here? Right? Yeah. We were just talking about uh, John Pennington. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. He's been through a few cycles. Yeah. And Jeff Flam, who was on yes. the podcast, one of the uh -huh. first guys. He's been through like seven cycles. Yeah, I know he has. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of weird. It feels like every cycle it, it, it gets a little bit less scary because mm -hmm. you kind of yeah. saw it played out multiple yeah. times, right? right. And yeah. there's almost simple rules to how to, you know, deal with that. Mm -hmm. I think we, when we first met, we were talking about health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, as an entrepreneur, that's a big thing because um, yeah. a lot of the guys I see just focus on their business. Mm -hmm. Guys and girls focus on their business and and they ignore their health or they yeah. ignore their mental health and those kind of things and yep. man you see like big rises and big burns if if people ignore those yeah. spaces yeah what are some things you do to like keep your mind in the best state that it can be no matter what's you know coming at you man yeah so on the physical side so one of my early mentors was that he was one of the best people I know his name was Jay Minton he worked nonstop he was a lawyer so he worked all the time he was consumed with his business. And I saw where he was so consumed that his physical health was just set aside because he was so down the path of the business. He would eat at midnight like these crazy big meals and did everything wrong in fitness. And I just saw firsthand what that does mm -hmm. and how that physically, start, he started breaking down over the years because mm -hmm. of that piece. And it's just what you said, you have to have that vision that I'm, that is a glass ball I'm never going to drop. It's like, you know, we're juggling all these these balls and some of them are glass and your physical health is definitely one of those. You, it's a Zig Ziglar. Do you schedule like a routine or is it now habitual or how's it? Yeah, so I'm not the exact science person. Okay. So, but I have certain things. I'm like, I got to do certain things in a day. So some people, like I talked to someone the other day, Ryan Panetta, he wakes oh, up yeah. at 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> every day. Mm -hmm. And he's so regimented, and that's not me. I'll kind of wake up whenever I need, but I always get like I read every single day. I have a 17 year old daughter. We read like we're reading right now as a man thinketh. Oh, that's a good one. So we sit down and like the uh, like hearing her thoughts when I read those kind of books. So I read every single day. I never miss a day. It's good for you ever. Mm -hmm. And then and then the physical side. I never miss a physical workout every single day. Right. Helps keep you sane. It does, yep. <laughs> and then I, I believe in the spiritual side as well, and and pondering and and prayer, and and so those are the three things that I try to hit on a daily basis, and that includes family time and everything else. This is great, dude. Yeah, I want to leave. There's a lot of people who are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs watching. There's a lot of young people too. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, one or two of your biggest pieces of wisdom that they can execute on right after this video. Yeah. So I feel like the best way to scale your business is scale relationships. Relationships. Relationships are key. And there's three ways you can do it as an entrepreneur. Because mm -hmm. everyone always like, how do I start? I don't even know. I have like some friends. The fact is, is this right here is a great place to start with your phone. You probably have hundreds, if not thousands of contacts. Mm -hmm. Just start reaching out to 10 of them a day and tell them your intention, what you're trying to do in your business. Um, make sure that they understand and then they'll they might know someone who can also help but start with five a day mm -hmm. just send them messages hey let's let's jump on a zoom call and talk to your people we're great at making a contact sometimes we're horrible at following through mm -hmm. yeah so that's, that's critical start there and if it's five a day if it's ten a day you can do just start reaching out to your network you'll be surprised how many great intros you can get if you're trying to sell a certain product 
and you say, hey, this is my product. Do you know anyone that might be a good fit for me? And get a referral over. If you're a friend, like I've gotten referrals from you, mm. which are awesome. Thank you. If Dan, if Dan sends you a text and he has a friend on with that text, it is like kung fu incredible strategy because now Dan's probably built a relationship with this person for many years and you trust me enough to be able to refer over to me, I'm gonna take care of that referral and that relationship. So I think it's extremely powerful. So start there. Text 10 a day? 10 a day. So start with 10 Text a day. 10 a day. So that's number one. Number two is never do lunch alone. Everyone has to eat. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna write this down. Never do lunch alone. So I have this down, guys. I made this is my New Year's resolution in January, and I've not done lunch during Monday through Friday. I've not done lunch alone once, not one day. So I'm like, hey, that means you get to spend an hour with someone at lunch. Yeah. Just bring lunch into your office. Got to eat. Yeah, it's actually where uh, Kevin gave me the idea because Kevin is the most efficient person I've ever seen with his time. Mm -hmm. I mean, he every hour is scheduled, and I said, "What's your New Year's resolution?" This is in January or in December, and he said, I'm gonna be 10% more efficient with my time. And I'm like, how is he gonna do this? So the next week when I saw him, I was like, what are you gonna do? And he said, well, I have to eat. So now, whenever he goes into any city, his assistant calls up the biggest, biggest business person in the city, in San Diego, and says, hey, Kevin wants to go to dinner with you. So he goes to dinner with someone or lunch with someone, and he's done 10% more efficiency in his time building relationships. Wow. So that's it's ever since then in January, I have not done lunch alone. Wow. Period. I do that at that juice bar, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get, a, so we the get juice an Ashwagandha bar. Lions yeah. main shake, you know? Mm -hmm. That juice bar was next level. Yeah. But that was the kind of things that I love to do, right? And then and then the third thing okay, is, is go. So the third <laughs> principle rule is go to live events. I mean, you guys do the coins and car event. Mm -hmm. That is a phenomenal. You Your events meet, are nice. Like. Yeah, you can meet like a hundred people. And then, of course, follow through. When I see you, like, hey, Dan, can I, I'd love to chat with you next week. How's your schedule? You're really good at this with mm -hmm. your card that you mentioned in your social the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah, share. Making sure that you share. Yeah. There's an actual follow through from that. So go to live events. Sometimes you're uncomfortable. You don't know what to do. Find like a, someone like Dan who's way connected. Say, Dan, this is the kind of person I'm looking to meet. Would you mind introducing me to some people? Dan's going to walk you over, and now you got to introduce from Dan to some people. Mm -hmm. It's like now I got 10, 20 appointments from that follow up. Mm -hmm. That's how, like, it's go to live events. So, those are the three rules that you have to do if you want to network. Text 10 people. Uh, don't do lunch alone. Bring a friend and go to live events. Uh, the wisdom of Sean Finnegan. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Okay, where, where can people find you, man? Yeah, so taxive.com, of course. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm on my social, social media, Finnegan Sean. Finnegan Sean. Yeah. Yep. Taxive, Finnegan Sean. Yes. Man, this is awesome. Thank we'll have you, to Dan. do a part two a little bit down the road. Let's and do it. we'll be documenting um, on social some of the events. We'll probably be a lot of your place, yes. our place. Let's do it. Kind of stuff. So let's do it. Killer, Great. man. Thank you, Dan. All right, guys. You've been watching Dan's Mineral Code podcast. Uh, a Jedi every couple weeks we try to get in that's uh, built something from just nothing and uh, done incredible stuff. So you can do the same thing. Just take the action items and execute on those. And if you found this beneficial, you're noticing there's no commercial, there's no sponsors, um, but you need to execute and share this on your social media as well so we can help more people. All right, guys, I appreciate you. We'll see you in the next couple weeks.